Brendan Fraser is the ultimate family adventure movie star. Best known for the Mummy franchise and for George of the Jungle, he's also had his fair share of serious and comedic roles. In fact, the popular actor jumps genres with ease. So what is it that makes audiences flock to his movies? He is the Cary Grant of our times, that's all. He's funny. He's self-deprecating. There's nothing attacking him, and you feel, oh my god, he's being attacked. What's happening to him now? Brendan Fraser's career kicked off playing an unfrozen caveman in the comedy Encino Man. But he went on to earn accolades for his clean-cut charisma in award-winning movies like Gods and Monsters, The Quiet American, and the Oscar-winning best picture, Crash. In spite of his notable performances in serious roles, it's his comedic ability that endures. Brendan Fraser, in addition to being a very underrated actor, a dramatic actor, is a consummate comedian. And he uh, has mastered through the years of making pictures somewhat like this, the remarkable ability to look at a point in space and fix his eyes at it and act like there's something there without having to have anything there. Fraser was struck by the acting bug as a boy when he saw his first live play, a West End production of Oliver. He got involved with drama at school and went on to earn a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting from the Cornish School of the Arts in Seattle. After landing a one-line role in the River Phoenix film Dogfight, he scrapped his grad school plans and went straight to LA, where he made the transition from theatre to screen. If you're coming from a background in theatre, your performance has to be done with a 10-inch brush, but if you're going to stand in front of a camera, you need to have a more exacting tool. After the light-hearted Encino Man, he was determined to show off his sensitive side, and he was cast as lead in School Ties, which co-starred Matt Damon, Ben Affleck and Chris O'Donnell. A string of respected indie films followed, including Airheads, which also co-starred Adam Sandler and Steve Buscemi as a rock band that takes a radio station hostage to get their music played. Fraser was beginning to earn a reputation as a hard-working actor. He's so thorough and so thoughtful and so professional. Not only all the stuff you would hope for in an actor, which is on time, knowing your lines, that was without question, but way beyond. He has a dexterity of kind of physical skill that he applied to each of these things. He's just masterful. All that hard work paid off. In 1997, Fraser finally hit the big time with one of his best known roles in George of the Jungle. Then, in the following year, People magazine listed him as one of the world's 50 most beautiful people. It seemed audiences were really starting to take notice. He's thrown himself into all his different characters with great aplomb and it's totally inspiring. Determined to avoid being typecast, his next role was as a gardener, befriended by an ageing gay film director in Gods and Monsters. The role was a million miles away from George of the Jungle, but a great choice for his career because the film was nominated for several Academy Awards and won for Best Adapted Screenplay. Brendan then took another sharp change of direction with his next movie choice. Blast from the Past was a stoner comedy in which he played a 35-year-old raised in a bomb shelter who emerges to discover the world of the late 1990s. Blast from the Past may not have been his best film, but his next movie was the one audiences best know Brendan for. In The Mummy, he stars as Rick O'Connell, an heroic Indiana Jones-style figure who unleashes a powerful mummy from an Egyptian tomb. The blockbuster movie went on to become a very profitable franchise. He really suits this role because Brendan doesn't want to be a macho action figure and that's not what this role required. He had to have a sense of humour, he had to be able to take a punch as well as give one. This movie and the tone of the movie is what he's sort of all about. And that's why I think it fits him like a glove. The Mummy franchise has been an enduring hit with audiences, but for Fraser, it's taken its toll physically. He passed out in The Mummy because the noose around his neck was too tight. And in The Mummy Returns, he tore a disc, cracked a rib and injured his knee. But injury hasn't dampened his enthusiasm for playing Richard Rick O'Connell. And after three Mummy movies, he says he'd still go back for more. So does he feel the character's changed much in each instalment? How's the character changed? Well, not much, but I'll tell you that I've been waiting for seven years with great anticipation to make this movie because I really enjoyed doing this guy. I really, really did. did was there ever any doubt in your mind when they said a third Mummy movie? Oh, bupkis, none. 
None. I was like, sign me up. Where are we going? China? Great. Brendan Fraser had found that family-friendly adventure flicks suited him and went on to star in more films in the same genre, like Bedazzled, alongside Liz Hurley. Sometimes you almost don't recognise Brendan in it until he starts talking, and then you say, oh, God, that's Brendan Fraser in there. It sets the tone for the movie. I mean, you know, we show up to support him and to, to do little funny things around him, and when he comes and he goes so over the top, we're right there with him. Director Harold Ramis reportedly cast Fraser because he thought he was able to play emotionally wounded better than anyone else his age. In fact, Fraser's performance was so impressive that he won the role ahead of Jim Carrey and Mike Myers. In The Quiet American, he put in another standout performance, but this time of a more serious kind. He played an undercover CIA operative opposite one of his idols, Michael Caine. When I was a student, I wasn't taught on how to act for camera. So I got a book on acting for film and for camera, and it was written by Michael Caine. Brendan is a sweetheart as a person, and he's a wonderful actor. I think this is the most difficult part he's ever had, and he's done it with such flair. Acclaimed Australian director Philip Noyce was also full of praise for his performance. At times I've believed that he is the quiet American because he is so undemanding, not a prima donna, is so deeply involved in the story and the character that he's playing. Nothing is premeditated, he just gives himself over to the moments. In the last decade, Fraser's had a few guest TV roles. He's appeared in Scrubs, King of the Hill and The Simpsons. A self-confessed fan of the animated film genre, he also jumped at the chance to be part of a Looney Tunes movie. In Looney Tunes Back in Action, he played security guard DJ Drake, the human leading man opposite Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd, and the rest of the Warner Brothers stable of characters. I've earned my stripes in this sort of style of filmmaking, and so I feel comfortable in it. It brings together everything that I, I love about acting and what makes the best come out in creative people, because you have excellent scene design, great story, really cool technology to make pretty much anything possible. It just makes it easier for performers to do what they do best, which is act and perform, and then marry all of these elements to make a really exciting film where you can see a live action character interacting with an animated one, and you believe it. The movie finally justified all those years of watching cartoons as a kid. I watched cartoons until my eyes turned square. I loved them, and I probably didn't know it at the time, but it was teaching me an invaluable lesson about comedy. Looney Tunes cartoons are short lessons in comedy, punchline, setup, joke, rhythm, timing, broad characterizations, satire, subversive humor. It, it's a goldmine of information. From cartoons to carjackings. Next, Fraser joined a star-studded ensemble in the racially charged multi-plot drama Crash, playing a high-powered Los Angeles district attorney whose life is sent into turmoil after a carjacking. Crash won multiple Oscars, including Best Picture. He then returned to Family Flicks, when he starred in and executive produced Journey to the Centre of the Earth. And as it turned out, the dinosaurs weren't the biggest obstacles on set. Being chased by a large albino dinosaur, I thought was exhausting. <laughs> we were on massive treadmills, and we learned that we could actually run faster than the treadmill would go, so we were trying to not run in slow motion. There's Josh and I, who's a really fit kid. We'd be like, running, running, as if for this dinosaur, help, oh no, what are we gonna do? And then we realized we're at the front of the treadmill, and we could just sort of pop off. <laughs> Oops! Barely pausing for breath, Brendan Fraser has moved swiftly from movie to movie and left a large and very profitable body of work in his wake. And at every step of the way, he's kept audiences and directors guessing by chopping and changing from genre to genre, making him a moviegoer's favourite and one of Hollywood's brightest stars. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.